It seems today that all you see is Saber Spark talking about family guy things. <laughs> Seriously, what's my problem? I just can't quit this topic. Adult animation video? I'm bringing up Family Guy. My childhood nostalgia mentioned in a video. Ah, I'm bringing up Family Guy. A video about animated ripoffs. Yeah, I'm bringing up Family Guy. And here we are on the gaming channel. And guess what I'm going to talk about? The Cleveland Show. Family Guy Online was a failed attempt by Fox to bring the perceived exciting world of Family Guy into the world of an MMORPG. Move aside, Warcraft. Make way for my own original character, Piter Griffin. Original character, do not steal. Unlike WoW, Family Guy Online was free to play via a player's web browser and was available for public beta testing in April of 2012. Yes, 39 years ago. Despite the effort from developers, who all wore funny hats, Family Guy Online only lasted until January of 2013, where it was unceremoniously shut down by Fox. What the hell happened? Why was this game made? And why an MMORPG? And on top of that, why was it canceled so quickly? Well, let's try to answer these questions and take a closer look at the flash in the pan that was Family Guy Online. Who's laughing now? I got my hat. It is so wild to think that Family Guy was outright canceled by Fox in 2000 and was dumped on Adult Swim. But what a blessing in disguise. That was the key to Family Guy's salvation as the show became a cult phenomenon and would go on to break records with its DVD sales. Hell, it did so well that Fox wanted Family Guy back, and they still air new episodes of the show to this very day. But for some reason, Fox thought it would be smart to make an MMORPG about Family Guy. In 2012. Huh. Interesting. Around this time, Family Guy was starting to fall from its peak, though it would be a gradual decline and would still, of course, be popular with viewers. But I gotta say, uh, the MMORPG approach was, um, different, to say the least. Uh, yes, World of Warcraft was a wildly successful MMORPG and was something to admire and potentially emulate. But good lord, easier said than done. But for some reason, Fox wanted to give it a shot. Why? I, I legit don't know. Running something like WoW, well, even on a much smaller level, is still expensive to do, especially if the game itself is free to play via a web browser. It's also worth mentioning that WoW was starting to come down from its own peak, so not the best timing. Damn you, Cataclysm. You broke my heart. Now, it should be said that adult animated shows getting their own video games wasn't unheard of. You got The Simpsons Hit and Run, uh, South Park N64, and of course, like, even to this day, you got recent examples like South Park and the Stick of Truth. Nope, that was like in the mid-2010s. I'm getting old. Hell, even Family Guy had a video game before doing the MMORPG venture, which was aptly called Family Guy Video Game. Good title. Cuts right to the point. But the good people of 20th Century Fox decided that one Family Guy video game was not enough. So they teamed up with Roadhouse Interactive and Acronym Games to make Family Guy Online. Family Guy is an MMLOL if you want. So is it, it's massively multiplayer, laugh out loud. Whose leg do you have to hump to get a dry martini around here? What will be really awesome about having this free-to-play browser-based online game is we'll be able to update it and keep it going and keep virtual Quahog evolving as Quahog does in the actual show. Like I already said, Family Guy Online could be played for free via a user's web browser and would use the Unity game engine to do so. But how does one make a profit off a free-to-play game? What's the angle? In-game purchases? Microtransactions? Oh, oh, they're advertising episodes in the game to go buy on the iTunes store. Huh, I, I don't think Fox had any idea of what they were doing. Would you like to come inside for a cupcake and a glass of wine? So, what about the game itself? Yeah, it failed, but was it fun at all? How'd it look? How'd it feel? Unfortunately, these are questions that I can't truly ever answer because the game was shut down back in 2013 and it is not available to play anymore. 
but I can draw some opinions just by watching the gameplay footage that was archived back in the day. So a big shout out to the folks who did that. We're using their video clips. Thank you so much. They're linked credits in the description. First off, the character models look pretty decent for a 10-year-old game and emulate Family Guy style quite well, though the environments and texture resolutions are really low. For example, the bushes in front of the house are just flat planes. That being said, the character creation seems incredibly bare bones. The fact that every class uses a Griffin family member as a base means the options are already pretty limited. They even like put Chris and Meg as one character as like sibling. Also the customization was incredibly threadbare. It should also be mentioned that the menu and UI eh, feels like a joke. It really does. The, the, the sound effects for moving the menu and making selections sounds incredibly amateur, like something out of a Unity asset flip. The fact that they have Quagmire say giggity, 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 every time there's a loading screen would, I'd imagine, get very old very fast. I'd be like, I'm putting the game down. I can't. I literally cannot play this with Quagmire going giggity, giggity in my ear all the time. Now, the game itself starts off at the Griffin's house, which seems like a massive missed opportunity. Interacting with these characters is one of the main draws of the game even if every player character being a clone of them erodes that a bit. But the Griffin house should be something to find, not where you start. Having the main characters of this IP act as a tutorial quest giver in the same fashion of World of Warcraft definitely deflates their presence. And also having the Griffin house flooded with random strangers breaks what little immersion a game like this could have had. Oh, and let's talk about the daily login bonus slot machine, which, you know, really says everything about what the goal of this game was. Before there's even a second of gameplay, the Skinner box rears its ugly head to try and leverage the players to FOMO into making sure they'll come back tomorrow as well. But at the end of the day, while watching this game, in hindsight, I can't help but think that Family Guy does not lend itself well over to an MMO setting. Yes, Family Guy has distinct characters, but not so much in the realm of sets or established like buildings or, or settings in the world, or at least in my opinion. What is Quahog? Well, to me, I can recall the Griffin's house, uh, the, the drunken clam, uh, Lois's dad's mansion. Uh, that's really about it. Now compare that to The Simpsons, where there are tons of landmarks and people to interact with. It's a poo store. It's the school. Uh, it's it's Homer's power plant with, with Monty Burns. Look, it's the pile of burning tires. I can go on and on. But for Family Guy, the setting is a bit more nebulous since it relies more on cutaway gags for the show that have really no grounded or consistent setting. That's one of the strengths of Family Guy, but it does not lend itself well over to a video game where it's pretty dependent on a setting. So yeah, you're in the world of Family Guy and you can make your own character, but the immersion just isn't there. Since the show itself, again, does not lend itself well over when it comes to establishing a world for an MMO. But here's the thing that's the most interesting to me. Family Guy Online is virtually dead in the water and cannot be remade even if an ambitious fan wanted to do so. Allow me to explain. Actually, you know what? No, I'm not. Tom! Tom, you explain. You're, you're better at this stuff than me. The reason we can't play Family Guy Online currently, nor is there any reasonable way for anyone to revive the game in an unofficial capacity, is that despite being a fully realized 3D MMO in the vein of something like World of Warcraft, Family Guy Online was played entirely in the browser. The user never actually downloaded the game locally to their hard drive. With no local files to reverse engineer, the actual content of the game was always hosted remotely on Fox's servers so end users couldn't mess with it, either then as players or now as curious tinkerers. The only way to get access to the game again would be if someone had downloaded the actual Unity 3D file that your browser was running at the time the game was active. But there was no reason for anyone to do that back then, since there was no offline functionality. Since the main website that hosted the game defaulted to a sign-up page instead of a launcher for the actual game itself, archive projects like the Wayback Machine were unable to back up the Unity 3D file either. 
So unless someone out there happens to have an old computer that they've randomly downloaded and at the time useless file from their browser, Family Guy Online is almost assuredly lost media for the foreseeable future. Whose leg do you have to hump to get a dry martini around here? So in conclusion, Family Guy Online was such a bizarre venture that really never made much sense. The MMO trend was starting to decline in the early 2010s, as was the popularity of Family Guy. Yet Fox decided to launch a game, the MMLOL, combining both of these aspects together for promoting episodes of Family Guy to buy on iTunes? Yeah, okay. It's remarkable how companies can go from, let's do the thing, to don't do the thing, like, like on a turn of a dime. I'm looking at you, Netflix animation. Greenlight all the stuff. Never mind. Literally burn it all down to the ground. To the devs who worked on this game, who might be watching this video, no shame to you all. You did what you could, and maybe the game could have been something, but I don't think an MMO was the way to go. I think a different setting, a different type of game could work much more in the advantage of Family Guy. Oh, and I gotta ask, does Disney own this game now? <laughs> I mean, I guess technically it should. So that means the code for this game is somewhere deep within the Disney vault. Nowadays, if you wanna play Family Guy games, you can find them on, oh no, mobile games. Uh, I bet you that's what Fox was wanting initially with this Family Guy online venture. Something that's like an advertisement, but like obviously Family Guy Online wasn't doing it the way they were hoping for. Instead, you want something like a Family Guy mobile game that does not cost as much to make and has a ton of microtransactions. There you go, that's what they wanted. Gives you the latitude of like, hey, this could blow up if enough folks buy microtransactions in the game. They never set out to make a good game. That's the truth of it. They just wanted to promote Family Guy or something else. I don't know, it's kind of weird. So if you want to play a Family Guy video game, then just go play Family Guy video game. Or you can go play Simpsons Hit and Run or Genshin Impact. Wait, what's that? <laughs> Why is that on the list? No, Tom, we are not reviewing Genshin Impact. No, I refuse to, no, Tom, no!